Hello folks, it's Strip here with EGIS Associates. You know, I talked originally that we were going to try to do more and different content on our channel. Well, this is definitely going to be different content. So, um, one of the perks of owning your own small business is that you often have to do a lot of things yourself. Things that people tend to take, you know, to other professionals to do. So, yeah, I, I don't always have the, the money or the time to, to do that. So. Uh, today, we are going to be working on changing the front brake pads on my wife's 2016 Mustang. So let me flip the camera here. So here you see the car in all of its wonderful glory here. And, and yes, my wife is a Bama fan. Uh, so she said I had to say Roll Tide. So there we go, Roll Tide. Um, anyway. This is, we're gonna get ready to get started. So here you can see some of the tools. So if you've never done this, uh, go with tools. So the first thing we got here is a jack stand that goes under the car when we get it jacked up for safety. We have our nice hydraulic uh, floor, floor jack there, which we'll use to lift the car. And then we have various uh, sockets over here. Now I do have a air compressor and an impact wrench. I'm not going to use that today. I'm going to try to use manual tools uh, so that uh, you know y'all see how it's done because not everybody has air tools to do it with. So I'm going to just stick the manual. Uh, you can see the C clamp there as well. We'll use that to compress the brake cylinder as well as the piece of wood. You can also use uh, use brake pad to to do that. Uh, and then I said the various sockets now this is even though it's a Mustang it uses metric So I had to go out the other day and get some uh, Metric sockets, so there you can see it. Uh, we'll start here on the passenger side get that done Also kind of back in the, the corner there. You can see another project That's uh, a computer case. It's gonna be part of a build we'll be doing in the future. So I'm gonna Go ahead and kind of start working on um, getting things uh, set up here and jacked up and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so the, the first step in doing this is to loosen the lug nuts. Now, it's important to not take them off, but get them loosened while the car is on the ground as if you don't have an impact uh, wrench. Otherwise, it's very hard if the wheel is up and free spinning to get the lug nuts loosened. So. I'm going to go ahead and get that started, picking the right uh, socket, and this is the first time I've done brakes on this car. Millimeter. Oh, there we go, that's perfect. So it's a 22 millimeter. Now I'm using, instead of the traditional um, Three quarter inch uh, drive, which is what this is, using that. Uh, I'm sorry, the half inch drive. This is a, I think a three quarter. Anyway, get the idea. And I'm gonna loosen these nuts first off. Make sure I got the ratchet going the right way. Loosen these lug nuts. And I probably need that extension as well. Get a little more clearance. Now, usually you'd have like a lug wrench. Well, my wife bought a car that doesn't come with a lug wrench. Instead, it has an air compressor to fix a flat. And so I'm using regular tools. Um, I can't, I'm going to get some more torque on this by using a breaker bar to help, again, just loosen the lug nut. You don't want to get it taken off. And try to do it in a star or cross pattern. Let's see, get that, that. Get rid of this one. And again, the breaker bar just gives you the torque or gives you the leverage you need. You, know, you just have to apply the proper leverage, as they say in. Caribbean. And there we go. Get this one. And for anybody that is a mechanic, maybe watching this, this is probably very painful. 
and I apologize. Never claimed to be a mechanic. And everything I've learned has been on old cars. I had a 67 Mustang. It was my first car. Back when I first got my driver's license. So, you know, I learned basics. So now checking, make sure I got all of them a little loose. Okay, so it feels like, okay, got them all a little loose. So, worst thing to do is get the car up in the air and find out they aren't loose. And then you got to drop it back down, whatnot. So if you have an impact wrench, this is easy. You jack it up and the impact wrench does it regardless. So next step now we got that loose is to go ahead and jack the car up. And uh, so we'll start that now. I'm going to use the hydraulic jack to get it up and then use the jack stand to hold it up because I don't want the car rolling back on me. The other thing I'm going to do is put something behind the back wheels so the car doesn't roll backwards because that would be very bad too. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so we're going to jack the car. Uh, it's important to know where you're going to put the jack and it needs to be on a point that is sturdy enough so you don't bend the floorboard of the car or mess up a major steering component. So you want to look at strong points, preferably along the frame, to use. And this car is very low, so it's problematic to get the jack underneath it to find a good point that it can So, okay, so we got the the car jacked up now. You can see I picked a, a point there. Frame, it's good and strong. And I've got my jack stand situated underneath here, also on the frame. Now, theoretically, I could just leave the jack stand to hold it up, but I'm gonna leave the jack there in place uh, just because I don't want the car to come down on top of me. So. With that, now we're going to take the wheel off and get to the, the hard work. So, off to do that now. Okay, so got the car jacked up, as we said, and time to get these the rest of these lug nuts off. Hopefully I loosen them enough. This will be an easy endeavor. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, a lot of folks would wear gloves so they don't get their hands all dirty. Um, I don't know, not me. I, what the heck? A little grind dirt never hurt anybody. Again, air compressed tool, impact tool, doesn't matter a whole lot faster. Come on. Okay, so we'll go ahead and pull the tire off. It's also good in time while you have tire to inspect it. Um, yeah, as I thought, she definitely is going to need some new tires very soon. She's hitting tread markers already. So I don't know if you can see these, but on this tire, in between the channels on the, the tread, you've got these little indicators that really tell you when it's time to get new tires and so when those start to level out it's definitely time so yeah uh, about time that's so just gonna sit back right down there so look at here we got uh, some basic parts here's our um, shock absorber uh, strut i think it's actually the strut not a shock absorber shock absorber is old what we used to have now we get these struts foils on them uh, here is your uh, rotor. This is disc brakes. So we got a rotor, and here is our caliper, and then there is our brake pads. So next step is to take this caliper off. 
Um, and so we'll need a different socket for that. It's now going to reach back here and find my other socket set. And pull it around. And try to figure out what size I'm going to need. Also need my wrench. So let's see here. Try. Uh, by the way, if you see an orange cat entering the video, uh, that's Soko's. That's one of our mini cats. We're an animal family. So we have, we just got a new cat for Christmas, an Abyssinian rescue. Um, so we have four cats, two dogs, and a fish tank. Uh, okay, so we got the right size. Turns out it's a 14 millimeter. I'll bust this loose. Sure I'm on the loosen. There we go. That's all loosen. Tidy, tidy, lefty, loosey. So hopefully, ah, good. So these have not been over torqued. A lot of times if you get this done at professional shop, they'll torque the living daylights out of these bolts, which is totally unnecessary. And it's hard to get them loose. These aren't bad at all. I'm doing that. Got a bolt. Make sure you keep up with all the bolts that you, you take out of here. So we got the caliper bolts out, and now we're going to pull off the caliper. It's going to slide it out like so. So this is a uh, dual piston caliper. So you can see these are the, the two pistons here, and when you press the brake pedal, uh, these expand out against the brake pads, which squeeze on the rotor which causes friction, which slows the rotor and ultimately stops the, the vehicle. So when you take this off, you, you want to sit it somewhere uh, so that it's not straining the brake line back here uh, and causing uh, a problem. So now we're just going to pull our old pads off. It's really simple. Pull them out. He says, there we go. Okay, you can see these are, are worn. They're not the worst I've ever seen because like <laughs> there's still actually pad material on here. I've seen it all the way down to the metal before. This little clip, if you, um, when you press, press the brake pedal, if you start to hear metal on metal noises uh, after things have been you know, going well, that's usually this clip hitting the the rotor causing a noise to tell you for sure it's time to get new pads. Um, you really don't want to wait till it gets that long, in my personal opinion. See, I'm not a mechanic, and again, see the reason for gloves. So now that I have those off, it's time to put the new brake pads on. Now, I have to tell you, I've done a lot of brakes in my life, um, from Mustangs of all years to Explorers to various Saturns and Thunder, anyway, a lot of different types of cars. You think that finding brake pads for a 2016 Mustang would not be overly complicated because there's a lot of 2016 Mustangs out there. And I believe it uses the same pads as the 2017, 2018, not sure about the 2019 yet. But yeah, I, it took me forever to find front brake, I find the rear brake pads and her Rear ones are okay, but yeah, finding the front ones was a, a nightmare uh, locally. I actually ended up having to get these shipped here, which is the nice thing about the internet, right? So I got two sets of, of brake pads in here. I'm going to put on the little hardware clips here look like they're in good shape. So I'm not going to mess with those. What I am going to do, if you'll pardon me for a second, is go get uh, some brake cleaner. 
and some uh, paper towel and kind of just clean that up. So somewhere I've got some brake cleaner right here. Yep, there we go. There's the brake cleaner. And then somewhere I have some paper towels out here. Oh, there we go. Let me go over here. I soak those. I feed them. Paper towels. want to clean up some of this here. Nothing too too bad for this. And again if you're a mechanic and I'm doing something horribly wrong, please comment. I'm just doing what I've always done. I've never had a problem. Never had a brake failure. Clean things up a bit in here. Just get brake dust and grime out. Do this to keep things good and clean. By the way, if this is the first time you have some, be careful. It is kind of nasty and it could like fade if you have good shoes on it could cause those get faded out damaged and things like that but anyway so just kind of cleaning that up a good bit okay so now it's just a matter of slipping the new brake pads on again make sure you align them back the same way the original ones on there and it should pretty much just slide into place. Okay, that's the back one. And now here is the front one. Good and done. Okay. So with new brake pads in place, next thing is put the caliper back on. To do that, pull the caliper back out here, we are going to have to compress these pistons. That's where that C-clamp and piece of wood comes in. Uh, so you could also use one of the old brake pads to do this. But before I do that, I need to pump, or I want to pop the trunk and open uh, the brake fluid reservoir up there so that any pressure that's put, you know, there's room for it to escape, uh, and we don't you know, accidentally do something that might cause damage to the system. So I'm going to go ahead and do that really quickly. And I'm going to assume you know how to pop your own hood. Usually the, the brake reservoir is back near the firewall on the driver's side. At least it is on Ford vehicles. In case you can't see it, it's right back over there is where that happens to be. Okay, so put this back down. So now this is where our C-clamp is gonna come in. Got this wood. I can sit this up here where I can. There we go. So again, I, this is how I do it. Take the C-clamp, I, I put the, the back part of the C-clamp onto the back of the caliper, and then you just start twisting and compressing the piston, or the pistons, um, using this C-clamp to apply the 
pressure and by using the wood you apply uniform pressure all the way across. Now once it starts getting tightened up in there, I'm going to pull this off. I think it should be just, nope, not quite there. I'll try it once more. We're getting close. And again, uh, they have tools to do this. So if you want to buy the you know, professional level tools, I just this way I've always done it as kind of a shade tree mechanic kind of fix in here to get them compressed. Off the wood. No, okay, so we've got both cylinders compressed in here, so that's good. Quickly take a paper towel and just kind of rinse that out. I'm not going to spray brake cleaner on here because the rubber, and I don't want it to eat away at the seals or on the pistons because that would be bad. Okay. Yeah, now we're ready to put the caliper back on. Make sure you align it properly with the way it was originally installed. Get down here now. That the, the where the the nuts that the caliper bolts feed into are on springs, so you can push those in. So we got this back in place. Now comes the fun of aligning the screw. So it goes in here. Get that one in. Now be careful. Make sure you don't cross thread or do anything silly like that. That's never good. It goes in. And then get my socket back in. Make sure I'm going to tighten it in. There we go. That's Titan as in tightening the bolts, not Titan as in the new NVIDIA Titan uh, RTX video card. This is Titan as in to make sure things are nice and tight. Don't want this coming off as we're going down the road and trying to stop. That would be a very, very bad thing. Okay, let's get it good and snug. You do not have to over torque these things. So there we go. We got that on there. Now it's time to put the tire back on. So get all this stuff out of the way. tire in and get it back in there. That's a little fluky. Okay. Take this tire here. And I'm sure I have people laughing at me all over the place right now. Get it there. Put it on. See um Trying to now use my foot down here to kind of hold the bottom in place, top band to hold the top in place so I can get lug nuts started. And put in the star pattern. Okay, so there you have it. 
how to change the brake pads on a 2016 Mustang. Uh, this is the EcoBoost four cylinder for you mechanics out there. Um, it basically the same process as with any car <laughs> for the most part. These are pretty straightforward. And when I found out how easy this was, I really got mad at brake shops charging as much money as they do to do this. Now I know as a business, they've got liability, they've got a lot of overhead with rent and tools, and of course they got to pay the mechanics and all that stuff to do things, but that's when I started doing this. I took my 1967 Mustang, I was telling you about, into a brake shop to have the brakes done. And they gave me a quote, and keep in mind, this was in 1990, it may have been 89, even that far back, for $600 to do the brakes on a 67 car. And I thought that was ridiculous. I didn't know anything about brakes at the time, never worked on them, but figured it was 1960s technology. How hard could it be? And so I went to an auto parts store, got all the parts they recommended in the estimate uh, for a hundred bucks and spent another 20 or so dollars on a couple of tools I needed. Um, and yeah, it took me all day to, to do it because it was um, drum brakes, not disc brakes. Disc brakes are a whole lot easier. But, yeah, I, I did it. <laughs> and a lot cheaper than what they were going to charge. So, there we go. Let's see how this video turned out then. See, it's not that difficult to, to do. Fairly easy and straightforward. And as I had promised you all, you'd get a different video type you know this year so this is the first one of our our new type videos but it's still instructional right that's what we're trying to do make content that uh, really teaches you something you didn't know or that you learned some fact you weren't aware of those kind of things so i think we've we've done that if you like the video if you found it useful you want to see more of these um non-gis non-technology related videos let us know uh, i said i'm a okay shade tree mechanic so certainly not trained as such but um, like I said, just, just let us know. Make sure you leave comments uh, and, and whatnot. Uh, also, while we're here, while we're here, if you're into uh, fish tanks at all, I have a couple here. So here's one I've got, a 50-gallon uh, tank that is reef ready. It's got the overflow in the background, in the back of it, center overflow, and then a Red Sea 130D Max all-in-one uh, tank. So these originally were salt water. You could do fresh water in them. But if you're interested in, in the metro Atlanta area and want to come get them, uh, they are for sale. Just let me know. Message me. And, of course, I mentioned our wonderful Socos. Come here, Socos. You're running away. There we go. So there's our one of our kitty cats, Socos. Very sweet kitty. Um, anyway, so with that, hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you didn't. Um, leave comments to let us know if that was all good for you. So I said, thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. Comments, let us know what you you, you want to see. Um, whether it's more of these, more Arc, you know, ArcGIS software videos, you know, whatever it is, let let us know. Uh, also, if you really like what we're doing here and want to help us grow it and do more and get better equipment, things like that, please become a patron through Patreon. Link for that is provided below. We have several different tiers you can, can join at, and we hope to be adding more and giving you some, some greater benefits as we figure all these uh, other types of technologies out. So with that, have a good one, and we'll see you in the next video.